This phone's called Jacko. So Jacko has been out of the joy for two weeks now. And they still haven't sorted out his door. From a seat at the back of the bus, he's barking these orders down the phone. He's telling Sarah he'll meet her later. He's ringing Joe to sort some coke. Telling Mandy to go fuck herself. Telling Mick beside him a few jokes. Ignoring the recorded warnings he casually smokes. Exhales into the bus and I am hoping against hope that he'll just fuck off. <laughs> Joe, take us two bruiser mates, hop off at the next stop and just go away. Silence that violent dance music he's been blaring her way. I have a creak in my neck from staring dead straight. I can't risk looking back and chancing my fate. And everyone around me is feeling exactly the same. All unwilling players in this familiar game. All unwitting subjects in Jacko's domain. The uncrowned king of the number nine bus. <laughs> from his perch regards, then this regards us. And it was not some young warrior, wrapped in a coat of tough guy lies. You know, some bravado baby who acts rough but inspires only in Barris' size. No, you can tell by his voice, there's violence in his eyes. The world has wronged him somehow, things didn't quite go to plan as he went from boy to man, so now we have to pay the price. And there's a heaviness in the air, and he relishes in this. Exhales plumes of smoke that wrap around our throats like a dry fist, points his fingers in destructive bliss. Eeny, meeny, moiny, mo. Choosing where to let off his destructive flow, and I'm just hoping I won't be the one who has to go. But it's not me he wants. No, it's a girl, about three rows from the back. Crosshairs aligned, target acquired, he mounts his attack. You alright, love? One day us a favour, would you? Can you soup me dick? <laughs> Ah, uh, please, a bit in the joy for a year, the nits in need of a lick. The henchmen snicker, the tyrant cackles from north to south, his kingdom rattles. Come on, will ye? You bleeding posh slut. And fuck it with that, I decide enough is enough. I'm bound from my seat to the back of the bus. You've gone too far this time, Jacko, and he barely looks up before I send him sprawling with a solid left of the chin. Remove from his face that shit stirring grin. Bundle him downstairs and out the door, return to my seat to a deafening roar. Of applause and cheers from my peers as the bus gently steers away from trouble and simply appears. The cause of our fears is reduced to a zero. I spin the girl in my arms and she exclaims, My hero! <laughs> <laughs> but of course that doesn't happen. <laughs> no, Jacko continues his taunting, brazenly flaunting his daunting power, glowering at the poor girl, who has no choice but to leave the bus. And head down, gaze averted, she walks between us, and tears stain her cheek. A day ruined or a week on some scumbag's whim, and there on that bus I truly load him. Him and his kind, those with warped minds who think it fine to carve a line through life, disrupting the lives of others. I hate the society that spawns him, and allows him to try. I hate myself for biting my tongue, for averting my eyes. But see, you can't fight them, because even if you win, you lose. It's not worth getting hurt, it's not worth the bruise. Jacko wears scars like badges of honour, where we worry about injuries, appearances, job interviews. And he eventually gets off and a cloud of carbon dioxide is released as we visibly heave huge sighs of relief pretend everything was okay we didn't heed a word he had to say that girl well, that girl was getting off at that stop anyway the same old unconvincing games we play obscuring the truth with hollow lies it doesn't matter what your disguise doesn't matter what clothes you wear and that bus you're just a target beneath Jacko's stare Thanks.